When is the Sabbath? All right. And this is an important question for us Hebrews. The Bible tells us in Exodus, hallelujah, 2010, it tells us when the Shabbat is. It tells us clearly. It says that the Shabbat, hallelujah, in 2010, but the seventh day, which day, y'all? The seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. That's what it says in 2010. In 2011, look what it says in 2011. Hallelujah. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath and hallowed it. So when is the Sabbath? When does the Bible say the Sabbath day is? The Sabbath is on the seventh day. All right? So, Pastor, what is the seventh day? And a lot of y'all are saying, well, the seventh day is Saturday. That's not the seventh day. There was no Saturday in Genesis. <laughs> there was no Saturday in Genesis. The, the, the Shabbat is on the seventh day. Well, well is, 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 is Shabbat on a Sunday? Like church is saying that Shabbat has changed. It went from Saturday to Sunday. Is Shabbat now Sunday? Sunday is not Shabbat. It's not Shabbat because Sunday is not the seventh day. Saturday is not the seventh day. And we got those that worship on Saturday. They come to us and they say, you're worshiping on the sun's day. You're a sun worshiper. Well, you're worshiping on Saturn's day. You're a Saturn worshiper. <laughs> and somehow worshiping Saturn is better than worshiping the sun? None of those are Shabbat. None of those are Shabbat. The Shabbat is the seventh day. The seventh day of what, Pastor? The seventh day of the month. All right? The seventh day of the month. All right? Now, God gave us a way to measure the months. He did. And the way to measure time is the heavens. The heavens is a giant Rolex. <laughs> it's a giant, hallelujah, uh, 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 Timex. It's a giant Casio. It's a giant watch. And the heavens above us move. <laughs> and just like your watch, you got a second hand, a minute hand, and an hour hand. The heavens got different celestial bodies to measure the day, <laughs> to measure uh, uh, the month. And to measure the year. It's a giant clock. Huh? You see, back in the day, our people knew how to tell the signs of the times. And our problem is, hallelujah, we, we knew the signs of the sky, rather, but we didn't know the signs of the time. Yeah, that's how it went. Jesus said, you know the signs of the sky, but you don't know the signs of the time. Right now, we don't know the signs of the time or the signs of the sky. Pastor, what you're saying, listen, I was shooting some ball, and, and, and we was in a gym, and there was a little young cat out there, Minister Brian, and, and they had a clock on the wall. It was an analog clock with, with, with hour and minute hand. You know what I'm saying? It was a clock. And so, so we shooting ball. We out there shooting ball, and so the game get over. He said, man, what time it is? I said, man, the clock right on. He said, I can't read that clock. Because the new generation can only read a digital clock. They don't teach them how to read an analog clock no more. And boy, we laugh. I laugh at that boy. I say, you don't know how to read a clock? Look, it's right there. It's 730. You don't know how to read a clock? And then the Lord hit me. You hold on him for not learning how to read an analog clock, but my people don't know how to read the heavens, the clock that I done set in the sky. You want to know when Shabbat is? Look at the clock. Look at the clock. Shabbat is the seventh day of the month. Pastor, how do I know my months? How do I know when a month begins? Because in order for me to know the seventh day of the month, I need to know the first day of the month. Well, the word month is a derivative of the word moon. <laughs> 
Month comes from the word moon because the only way to tell when the month starts is to look at the moon. Hey, God. <laughs> oh, oh. Every month, according to God's timing, his timing, every month, the moon do something different. The moon is a perfect measurement of a month every time it happens. All right? Now, I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to do my best to teach it. Amen. So little Omar would be able to understand this. And so the first day of the month, the moon always looks like this. I'm going to show a picture of the moon. I'm going to show a picture of the moon. Hallelujah. This is what the moon looks like the first day of every month. That's God's calendar, all right? God's calendar is by observation. Man's calendar is by calculation. Man do his calendar by num numbers and fractions, and we, we do this, we do that, we do it. You ain't got to do all them numbers. You just got to go out and look at the sky to see what day it is. And if you're looking for the first day, you're going to see this new crescent moon. It's the first sliver of light on the crescent moon. And you look up there and you say, that is the first day. You count seven days after that. And you found the Shabbat. Oh! <laughs> You count, listen, you count that as number one, the next day is number two, the next day is number three, the next day is number four, five, six, seven, and you found Shabbat. Ministers, listen to me. We found the real Shabbat. Because Shabbat was lost. They think it's Saturday. But it's not Saturday. They think it's Sunday. It's not Sunday. You got to, hallelujah, our calendar is by observation, not calculation. All right? Now, Pastor, break it down for me. Break it down for me. All right? All right? This new moon, as it's called, was always the first day of the month. That's what they call it, the new moon. And when they would see that new moon, they would have a celebration. Because the month done began. They would eat. They would sing. It was another month that the Lord had gave them. Huh? In Genesis 8 and 5. Let me look at it with you. Genesis 8 and 5. All right. And we're going to break it down some more. Just, just stay with me. I want to show you that the new moon was always the first day of the month. I want to show you that. The new moon was always the first day of the month. In Genesis 8, 5, it says the waters in Noah's day, the waters decreased continually until the 10th month. And the 10th month on the which day? On the first day of the month were the tops of the mountain seen. So the 10th month, the first day, Noah looked out the boat and he can see the top of the mountains. It was the first day of the month. Let me show you another scripture out of the Jubilees saying the same thing, but with different words. Jubilees. And the new moon of the 10th month, the tops of the mountains were seen, and Noah was glad. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor, why are you so excited about this? I've just proved to you when the first day of the month is. The first day of the month is the new moon. It's the new moon. Bring it back to 8.5. Bring it back to 8.5. Come on, come on. Bring it back to 8.5. And the waters decrease continually, huh? Until the 10th month. The 10th month on the first day of the month, the tops of the mountains were seen. Now bring it back to Jubilee 6.27. Jubilee is going to tell you. And on the new moon, which is the first day of the month, the tops of the mountains were seen. Come on, give God some praise up in here. Oh! That's why you're so happy. We found the Shabbat. And you can only find the Shabbat when you find the first day of the month. From that first day, you can count seven days and you're going to find Shabbat. The new moon was always the first day of the month. Now, the problem is, since the Roman Gregorian calendar that we own, is no longer pegged to the moon. 
The, the month begins at any time. See, our months, Minister Brian, always began when we saw the new moon. Now they began January, February, any time. Because it's not based on observation. It's based on calculation. And I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to break it down. Simple, 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 simple. All right? Uh, 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 they begin the month, the year, any time they number say it. Not when God says it. All right? It's amazing, y'all. The heavens declare his glory. The heavens even tell when it's a new year. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. The crescent moon, show the picture again. The crescent moon, the new moon, at the beginning of the year, is upside down. It's like a smile. And God is saying, Happy New Year. <laughs> if you watch the heavens... You'll know God's timing. On their calendar, we don't even really know the real year it is. We don't even know the real. They say it's 2023. It ain't 2023. It's more like 5,000 something. That's what it is. Because it's been almost 6,000 years since he created. <laughs> okay, okay. Let me break it down even further. Give me the calendars, uh, Deacon Malvo. Okay, I'm going back to March. If the new moon is the beginning of the month, why is it way March 22nd? You see why they begin the month? Look at, look at the moon, March 1st. It's not attached to the moon. The month's supposed to begin for us on March 22nd because that's where the new moon is. I don't want to go close to it, but you can see it. That's where the new moon is. That's the beginning of a month. Now, if I'm trying to find the Sabbath, how do I find the Sabbath, the seventh day, when I know what the first day is? We just count. The first day is the 22nd. The second day is the 23rd. The third day is the 24th. The fourth day is the 25th. The fifth day is the 26th. The sixth day is the 27th. And the Shabbat is on the 28th. Is on the 28th. Now, is that a Saturday, that 28? No, it's a Tuesday. It's a Tuesday. It's a Tuesday. That's right. That's right. And guess what? Next month is going to be a different day. Because <laughs> their calendar is not pegged to the moon. We've forgotten the Shabbat. Go to April. Go to April. I'm going to show you again. So in March, at the end of March, Shabbat was on a Tuesday. Now, by the time we get to April, let's figure out when Shabbat is. So the first day, look at it with me, Dallas. What's the first new moon in April? What day that is, y'all? Come on, y'all see it? All right. The 19th is close, but the new moon got to be on the other side. All right, that's right. That's called a waxing new moon, and it's a little bit technical, but the 21st is the first day of the month. Now, if the 21st is the first day of the month, let's find out when the Sabbath is. First day, 21st. Second day, 22nd. Oh, baby, God done made it easy for us. Huh? Huh? All we got to do is look at the 27th. The 27th is the Shabbat. And in April, the Shabbat falls on a Thursday. You see why it can't be Saturday? Why it can't be Sunday? Because every month is going to change on their calendar. Because the new moon is, is, not, a, is, not, is not attached to the man-made calculation calendar. Let's go to me. Let's go to me. Pastor, when is the new moon in May? Come on, Dallas, test time. Can y'all see the new moon in May? Which date that is? The 20th. The new moon is the 20th. That first little sliver of light. You count seven days after that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the Shabbat falls on the 26th of May. Shabbat in May is on a Friday. Think about what I just told you. 
They trying to celebrate Shabbat on Saturday every week, every month. And Shabbat don't work like that because their calendar is twisted. We count Shabbat from the new moon. So in March, Shabbat fall on Tuesdays. In April, Shabbat fall on Thursdays. May, Shabbat falls on Fridays. And June, I'm going to give you June. Watch what Shabbat fall on. Give me June. Look at June. We're going to do it again. Hallelujah. All right, Dallas. Look at the calendar good. When is the Shabbat? Now, let me help you with this. The way God do a new thing is, a new thing with God always goes from darkness to light. That's the way God give birth to things. Even in the beginning, he say, in the evening, in the, in the morning, was the first day. <laughs> it always began, some always begin in darkness. In your life when you was born, you was born a baby in the womb in darkness. You come out, you see the first light. You grow up, you're dawn to be a full grown adult. Full moon. And then you begin to go downhill, which we on the downhill. Those fellas that's over 45 or whatever like that. We on the downhill. So think about the moon. It goes from small to big to small again. That's the, that's the cycle with God. All right? All right? Things begin in darkness. Even in Christ, he said we are translated out of darkness into his marvelous light. God always go from dark to light. And so when you think about the new moon, the new moon is always going to go from dark to light and then back to dark again. That's the way the new moon works. All right. So if we look at June, where is the new moon? The first sliver of light is going to be on the 19th. We count from the 19th, seven days, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and Shabbat in June, at the end of June, falls on a Sunday. That's the way it go. And some people ask me, they say, Pastor, well, is Shabbat just once a month? No, because from that Sunday, all right, you just count seven days, and it's Sunday, 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 until that new moon come again, then Shabbat going to switch, and then it'd be another day, all right? So Shabbat is every week. Okay, it's every week, but you can only tell when Shabbat is, when you know the new moon. And this is what it's all about. So, Pastor, what you're saying, the Judaizers are wrong. They're thinking they can get to heaven by worshiping on Saturday, but Saturday is not always the Shabbat according to the Roman calendar. They're following a calendar based on calculation and not a calendar based on observation. It's the moon that's going to tell us when the new moon is. And it's the moon that's going to tell us when the seventh day is. And when the moon tells us the seventh day, we just follow that pattern, the 14th day, the 21st day, the 28th day. And we worship God on those Shabbats. You know what I'm saying? So, Pastor, what you're saying? They wrong. <laughs> but they not only wrong. Christianity is wrong as well. Why are we wrong, Pastor? For thinking that Shabbat is on a Sunday. Shabbat ain't no Sunday. And Shabbat ain't no Saturday. Shabbat is on the seventh day. Now, Pastor, this stuff is deep, Pastor. I know. And maybe you're going to have to listen to it twice. But it's easy. Just follow the new moon. Follow the new moon. And seven days from the new moon is the Shabbat. No matter what the Roman and the European and the white people calendar say. The Hebrew calendar is always based on the heavens, all right? Now, y'all, God prophesied and predicted that we would forget our Shabbats. He, always, he also prophesied and predicted that they would grab our calendar and change the times and seasons. In Daniel chapter 7, verse 25, I'm going to show it to you right quick. It talks about the Antichrist in the book of Daniel. And it talks about the Antichrist and his work 
and blaspheming and making himself God and not loving uh, women. It's all kind of stuff that the Antichrist is going to be a part of and doing. But the Bible says he shall speak great swelling words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws. And in the Hebrew right here, we get the intimation that he's actually going to change the calendar. That's what the Antichrist would do. He would change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. And God is saying, I'm going to let him do it. I'm going to let him change the times. I'm going to let him change the year, the month, because the truth of the matter is whoever rules the world, whatever empire rules the world, determines what calendar and what time the world is going to be on. Right now, we are under the times of the Gentiles. Oh, y'all ain't ready for this. <laughs> Can you hear me out there? We're not under Hebrew time right now. We're on the calendar. But can you hear it? January, March, April, May. Can you hear it? Monday, Monday, Tuesday, huh? Wednesday, which is Odin's Day. Thursday, which is Thor's Day. Friday, which is Frieda's Day. Saturday, which is Saturn's Day. We are on their calendar, y'all. And it's a calendar based on calculations and not observations. And so on that calendar, you really can't know when Shabbat really is. Because he changed it. Now just imagine if you were Satan. I know you're not Satan, but imagine if you were Satan. And the only worship that God accepted from his people was on a certain day. And every time they worship on that day, no matter how ratchet they was, no matter what they did, if they came with their offerings, if they came with their blood, if they came with their worship, God would forgive them and he would bless them because he blessed the Shabbat and he hallowed it. And when they did things on it, he blessed them for blessing it. If you were Satan and them coming back to God always on Shabbat to get their week right, to get their month right, hallelujah, wouldn't it be a good idea to change the day? <laughs> Wouldn't it be a good plan to make them forget that holy day? Because the part of the old covenant is, I need you to worship me on this day. Thank God for the new covenant. But, but on the old covenant, you're going to have to worship me on this day. And do no work on this day. To be my people. Well, Satan... Changed the times and the laws. And we forgot the day. We forgot the day. And God knew that we would forget the day. He knew it. You ever notice that the fourth commandment is the only commandment that starts off, remember? Thou shalt have no other God before me. Thou shalt not make any graven image. Thou shalt not take my name in vain. Remember. <laughs> he told us to remember the Sabbath because he knew we would forget. <laughs> Are you hearing me up in here, Israel? We had forgot the Shabbat. Didn't even know when it was. And all those Hebrew Israelites out there, all the church that's out there, hallelujah, nobody know when real Shabbat is because they done took their eyes off the heavens. I want to show you something else. Look at Jubilees 113 for a second. Jubilees 113. We talking about the Shabbat. And I just want to show you Jubilees 113. And hopefully I have it with me, but I think that if I can't find it, James has got it up for you. And Jubilees is said, Jubilees says, they will forget all my law and all my commandments and all my judgments and will go astray as to new moons. We won't even know when the new moon is, yo. Jubilees say, and they're going to forget what? The Sabbaths and the festivals 
and the Jubilees, which was the 50-year anniversaries and the seven-year anniversary, and they're going to forget all the ordinances. Look at, look at, look. At, so, so this is proof that we would forget it. That's where we are right now. Look at Jubilee 6 and 34. All right? It says in 634, it says, and all the children of Israel will forget and will not find the path of the years. They won't even know what year it is, Minister Phil. He said, and will forget the new moons. They won't know what the new moon looked like. They won't know the first day of the month. And because they won't know the first day of the month, they're not going to know the seasons and the Sabbaths. And they will go wrong as to all the order of the years. This is where we are right now. The boy don't even know when Shabbat is. They don't even know when Shabbat is. They think Shabbat is on every Saturday. Boy, you're tripping. You're tripping. That's because you don't know the new moon. You see? You see? But I thank God, y'all. All right? I thank God. That whenever the devil do a thing to harm and hurt God's people, God always know beforehand what the devil is about to do. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? God is never, ever at the mercy of the devil. So the devil plan was, let me get them to forget what Shabbat is. And if they forget what Shabbat is, they could never really worship you. And if they could never really worship you, they could never be forgiven. They could never be saved. I'm going to take Israel and throw them away because they're not going to remember your Sabbath. And you said, whoever don't do the Sabbath should die. Israel ain't going to have a chance. I will get them to abandon their old covenant. And you know what God said? God said in the very beginning, I know what you're going to do to my people. I know you're going to change the times and the laws. But since I am omniscient, declaring the end from the beginning, since I know you're going to get them for, to forget the Sabbaths, I am going to make a way for them to worship me in spite of the Sabbath. Now, I must say that I was very happy to see that presentation from Pastor Omar and I'll post a link below where you can watch the full presentation. But I just want to quickly say that even though he acknowledges the important biblical fact that Saturday is not the Sabbath of the Bible, Saturday is not the Sabbath that the ancient Israelites kept, even though he acknowledges that fact, he does still operate his church on a Sunday. He doesn't think it's possible to keep the true Sabbath today as it is. And he thinks that God will restore the new moon and the Sabbath truly after the times of the Gentiles. And that's fine, that's his belief. I don't really believe that. I believe that we still can keep it through faith. That's just my belief. But um, what I loved is how he clearly acknowledges the biblical fact that Saturday is not the Sabbath. And you watching this video, if you were to do your own study, remove all your preconceived ideas, the traditions of man, just get your Bible and your concordance and you would see the same thing. It's impossible. Saturday is not the Sabbath of the Bible. And that's all I'm saying. Now, what you choose to do with this knowledge that's between you and God. I am not saying now everyone must now keep the lunar Sabbath. I know everyone has challenges. It's not easy. That's something you have to take to the Lord and don't make any drastic decisions. What I'm learning now is that salvation is an individual thing. There's a reason why the Bible says work out your own salvation through fear and trembling. This is my journey and I'm brave enough to share it on YouTube despite the criticisms and hate that I get. You don't have to do that, you know. You take it personally with the Lord and ask him to show you and guide you and he will do that. That's all I'm saying. And this idea that Rome hates Saturday and blah 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 it doesn't, because I was now thinking back, remembering that when I was a Catholic, because I was raised Catholic, my whole family's Catholic, we also went to church on Saturdays. The Catholic Church also has Saturday Mass. You can either go on the Saturday or on the Sunday. Sometimes my parents go to church on the Saturday to Catholic Mass. 
you know so what i want you to understand that rome doesn't care if you're worshiping on a saturday that's why the church isn't being persecuted that's why adventists get on well with rome because they are under their calendar you know but when you start to move away to the lunar sabbath like you are truly forsaking how this world operates then persecution will come then the persecution that the Bible talks about, then the persecution that the Bible talks about will happen. You know, so I just think we're in just such like crazy times of deceptions, you know, and you cannot take any man's word for any form of truth, not even me. I don't want no one to look to me or base my faith on me. Just look to the Bible, pray so hard and God will guide you.